I've known Chris Rock uh, for many, many, many years. We've been friends since I was 19 years old. And he approached me on this, um, saying that he had written it for me, which was incredibly flattering and exciting and awesome and also um, stressful. And uh, I was like, good on that. Thank you. It was very sweet of you. And have fun making your film. And he was like, wait, excuse me? You're not going to do it? I'm like, I'm thinking maybe not. And um, for multiple reasons. You know, my grandmother had passed two years ago, and I felt like I'd done like eight movies after she'd gone, and I just needed time to be with my family and chill and just take a breath that was feeling a bit burnt out. And uh, luckily my brother read the script and he was like, this is exactly it though. Like you were gonna be in New York with your family. You're gonna be working with a friend who's awesome. He says he wants to, you, he will collaborate with you to develop this character to be someone that you can love and not just like. So like there's there's nothing, there's no negative here. And I was like, well, the only negative that could actually potentially be is that he's gonna say, yes, we can change this and we can develop this and we can do all that. And then he's be, as the writer, director, producer, actor in it, become so overly precious with it that then we don't change anything and then I'm gonna be mad and then we're not gonna have friendship and that would really suck. So why, my, why, why make that happen? Why take that risk? And he convinced me otherwise, you know, he really did. And I'm really grateful for it because I got to do work that I don't get to really do. And I got to really stretch myself and do things. And, and he got me to be funny, you know, it was the thing that he specifically said, don't worry about it, there's a lot of comedians in this. You don't have any pressure on you to be funny. And I was like, okay, as long as I don't have any pressure to be funny because I don't know that I'm funny. And he still got me to be funny. And he, he really, he, got, he made a really special film. And, uh, and actually our friendship improved over it because he's really wonderful to work with. He was very seamless about it. He's really a fun, awesome, very smart, really interesting person. And he was great to watch make this movie happen. All his friends, all of his ideas. And he says he wasn't the director, he was the protector. And he did, he protected all of us. He protected his idea, he protected the story. And now it's really a very proper film to deliver to people, and I'm excited to be a part of it. I play a woman named Chelsea Brown. She works for the New York Times. She's a journalist. She also does many other things like photography, and she's a mom. Um, she's a single mom. She uh, lives with her mom. Um, she is a hustler. She's a New Yorker. She um, has gives gives a, she's a very honest person i think she has a lot of integrity but she doesn't always give full disclosure you know she's i like i, I kind of like her having two hairstyles exactly for that she's kind of got a, a lot of things going on with her um she's been sober for a very long time she's got a very interesting outrageous past that she's not shy about sharing and uh she's someone who's going to hold your feet to the fire she's a she's a, a aggressively present person and um, I really love that about her. I think it's a really great way to experience the idea of a celebrity being interviewed and what that looks like in journalism behind the scenes and press conferences and all those different things and understanding the filter that comes with those reviews that you read and you know those, those exposés and character sort of you know, either push-ups or like assassinations, you know, that kind of come in, in different magazines and articles and things that you read. And when you, the more you get to know her as you're trying to get to know him, the more you understand how com completely complex this entire process is. And I really loved kind of exploring all of that because as an actor, I feel like I get to do, um, I get to, to do for a living what is one of the oldest traditions that we ever had as human beings, which is storytelling. And as a journalist, I suddenly recognize that that's part of it as well. I've never really, I, I had considered it in the sense of like, you know, doing really proper news stories and non-fictional stuff. But even the non, you know, you know, even the fictional stuff, like there's your storyteller, you know, you get to be, if you're not actually a fan, you get to be that experience for the fan who is like, you met that person I love or hate. What was that like? You know, and, um, and thank goodness for that. You know, that's what that's what connects us to each other. Are all of those stories good, bad, and ugly, um, real and not real? Um, and uh, it's special. It's very cool, and it was really fun to do. Atmosphere on set was ridiculous. Like it really, it was humid and really, really hot because we're shooting in New York, and you know, when people are really sweaty, I mean, good things come out of it. You know what I mean? People showed up. People were very present. 
And I thought that was really, really awesome. You know, you had, we've got some really startlingly clear and incredible performances out of everybody. And I think one of the things that makes this movie so special is that as though, although it's an ensemble and it's got so many people in it, you don't feel like there are cameos. They really are people realizing very actual characters and every single one of them helps move the story along. Even if they're there, what it feels like for a punchline, that that punchline always comes back around in a really meaningful way to the story. I call him a master conductor. You know, he kind of went in there and he did his little thing and it was really fun and everybody tuned their instruments and showed up and was ready to go and they got to develop their characters and do all these great things and he let them have their solo, like, we're all gonna listen to just you right now. But then he also would sometimes keep his hand up and you're like, oh, I was done. Oh, I guess not. Oh, and he kind of keep doing it and suddenly you realize, whoa, you got something out of me that I wasn't expecting to do. And thank you, you know, because I got to do what I do and put my stank on it. But you also saw something else in me and took it to that level. And he did it differently with every single person as we were filming. You know, like there were some people who was like, you just need to sit, hit this word in this line. That's all I'm looking for. And here's your actual line. And other people, he'd go just... I'm just gonna ask you a couple questions and guide you and let's see what happens. And other people, he just, just not call cut. He just not call cut. And so the person would just keep going and going and going and going. We've got, we've got footage forever on Tracy Morgan. Just keep going and going and going. You're like, dude, we gotta move on. Like we got, we got a day to cover. And like, why, why are you going with this? It cannot possibly be funnier. He's the funniest freaking man on the planet right now. Like in front of this White Castle, how can it be any funnier? And Chris would just wait and he'd wait and he'd wait and throw another question out there. And all of a sudden you'd get this gem and you're going, <gasps> That's what you were waiting for. That's the sweet spot. You know your instruments. You know your, you know your craft. Like you know what you're doing. You're really amazing. And you know, I think so many people know Chris as this person out there and doing and talking and aggressive. And you can't imagine you'd ever get an edge, a word in edgewise. But he's an incredible listener. He's an incredible conversations. But he's an incredible listener. He knows. He pays attention to everything. And by paying attention, he knew what everybody. He knew where he could take them, and he did it. I think people are gonna love this movie because, you know, it's it's fun. It's enjoyable, like it's a good night out. It's a good day out. It's perfect for our culture. You can actually sit there and go, I don't need to look at my cell phone once. I actually get to just sit here and be entertained and my brain go in all different directions, which is what I'm used to as if I was online. I don't need to watch 20 different YouTube videos. It's all here in one. It touches on everything, relationship and some, you know, reality TV and issues with your father and, you know, struggling with what your talents are. And it's a, there's a buddy movie in it and there's a bear suit. Like, I mean, it's literally, it's ridiculous. It's, it's unbelievable. And it all actually works. It's not chaotic. It's, it's actually really, really special. So I think people are going to feel like this is a movie for them.